Hello, this is Richard, uh, back for another Parts Talk episode. Uh, this time we're gonna talk about our engine. One of the, the most common questions we get about our bikes is about the engine. Um, and that question ranges from why so small to why not made in the USA to why air cooled. Um, and I hope to answer most of those questions uh, in this, in this uh, episode. So uh, just a little bit of backstory uh, that will make, maybe make this make a little more sense is that uh, Devin and I uh, got start, our start was in small displacement, uh, mostly two strokes. Um, and that was actually more like in the 50 cc, 75, 80 cc range. Um, and so what really got us interested in two wheeled vehicles at all was the the fun of being able to work on a bike by on, by ourselves, and the lightweight nature of uh, of, the, of vintage mopeds and, and small displacement bikes. So it was a combination of the, the simplicity of them and their you know ease of maintenance with the lightweight that really got us interested in this. And that's really what we're what we're all about here at Janus is that that combination of of simplicity, uh, vintage aesthetics, and um, uh, the ability to understand what's going on. So when we were setting out to, to find a, a motor, actually the first engine that we went with was a 50cc two-stroke uh, made by Derby. And that was a motor we used for a couple of years um, uh, when we, with our 50cc line of Halcyons. And for a variety of reasons, we decided we needed to go with something a little different. Um, the main reason being we needed to meet modern emission standards. So for the last 40 plus years, the U.S. has regulated um, all vehicle, all engines um, uh, for emissions to help clean up, um, clean up the air and, and the pollution that are coming out of these engines. So that was very important. If we want to be able to sell a bunch of these, we have to meet EPA uh, regulations. And if we want to sell in California, which is a huge market, we need to meet California Air Resource Board uh, uh, requirements. So. Uh, the, other, the other thing we were looking for was an air-cooled engine. We went with a water-cooled engine on the 50, and the aesthetics just, it didn't really fit as well with the Halcyon model, and, and with really with any of the models. There's something about an old-fashioned air-cooled engine that just really fits what we're trying to do. Uh, it's, it's fewer moving parts, it's simple, it looks good. So an air-cooled engine was something we were really interested in, and with the lower power that we are, are putting out with our engines, fuel, fuel, uh, liquid cooling isn't as important for meeting emissions. So um, that was that was a big. Uh, that's one of the reasons we, we chose an, an engine like this, and then uh, carburation. Um, we were really interested in seeing if we could get if we could still do a carbureted bike. Um, you know, our owners. Um, what we're interested in, and what our, most of our owners are interested in, is a, a motorcycle that that you can be be involved with. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's a high maintenance. These are very low maintenance engines, but it means that there is an involvement there. Flip, you know, levers to flip and gauges to read, and you know, it's 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 an involved process that's really part of the experience of owning a motorcycle. If you want to get from point A to point B in the easiest manner possible, a motorcycle probably isn't a, the best solution. Um, so this is about having fun um, and and experiencing everything that a motorcycle is. Lastly, emissions compliance. Um, we needed an engine that we knew could pass modern emission standards. So uh, we we looked around quite a bit at different engines and. Um, we, we finally settled on something like this. Um, this engine here is a 229 cc, is nominally a 250. Uh, it's a single cylinder, which so again gets back to that simplicity that we're so interested in. It's what people call a thumper. So it has one carburetor, two valves, one piston, um, and in this case, one cam. So it's just the very, very, very simple um, and straightforward. And that's kind of where we were thinking we, we were interested in. And this is a, an engine which has been designed to meet U.S emission standards. So uh, we started looking around and we found a, a, a variety of manufacturers for this engine. Um, this, is, this engine is called the CG250. Uh, it was designed um, in the 1970s and has been up updated since then. And so we went with a variety of different manufacturers for this engine and finally found one that we really thought was just a clear leader um, between the, the about three or four different engines that we tried out. And um, this is an engine that we, we, tr we tested the transmission. We wanted to know how, it, how the transmission held up over time and how, how smooth the engine felt and what the internals, what the quality just 
of the machining and, and materials and tolerances. So this was a clear, clear winner for us. We were really excited by it. And uh, as we have continued to do, you know, through the steps of bringing this to market, EPA testing, we've realized that it really has held up to that. So um, uh, that is a nice segue into the, the, the history of this engine. Um, it wasn't really until after we went through EPA testing and very successfully and, and, and have hundreds of these engines out in service with thousands of miles on them that we that I decided you know what is that what is the actual like history of this engine and um, that that research was really interesting because uh, it's, it's got an amazing history um, this is a this as I mentioned is called the CG 250 it started off life as the CG 125 it was developed by Honda in the early 70s as an answer to uh, their competition the other big three uh, Japanese brands um, all were they were all competing in developing third world countries for an engine that would be reliable and um, low maintenance. And Honda was having a really hard time because their engine for that segment of the market was the CB125. And the C if you know it, the, the CB line is Honda's most famous motorcycle engine line. It it's a very sophisticated, very powerful for its time, um, lovely engine that uh, uses overhead, two double overhead cams, um, and it's really a, a, a fantastic engine. However, the, the CB125, which is their smallest and simplest of the CB line, was just a lot higher maintenance than the competition's two strokes, many of them being two strokes, um, and they, they, they were failing, and not, they were not uh, as successful in these markets. So they sent two of their uh, engine engineers out to these markets, so they visited the Philippines, uh, Pakistan, um, uh, all, all over Southeast Asia, uh, uh, Brazil, and China. Um, and these are places where these engines are actually still being manufactured and used. Um, and they, what they realized was that there was no preventative maintenance. Um, maintenance was, oh, well, the engine made a loud you know, clunk and stopped running, and it's leaking oil all over the place. What do I do now? That was maintenance. So basically, it was complete failure, then rebuild it um, to, w w is what maintenance was. And that's because these countries are places where motorcycles are not leisure toys, like we use them. These are places where this engine has to wake up in the morning <laughs> and work all day, every single day of the year, because they're using it to carry, uh, you know, 100 ducks or... You know, uh, you see these videos online of just the insanity, like, you know, 10 people on a 125cc motorcycle. So that, that, that was, this is an engine that has to work day in and day out. It's not a toy. And um, they, what they ended up doing was realizing this, and they realized that we need to redesign an engine for this specific uh, use. And so they developed, they, went, they flew back to, to uh, Japan, and they immediately started work on a new engine that would be simpler, lower maintenance and, and, and wouldn't require as, many, as the high tolerance of the CB125. And what they developed was called the CG125. And the, 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 the uniqueness of the CG line is that it used, uh, it, did, it was an overhead valve engine. So the difference being that there's no cams, there's no cam chain, there's no cam, tension, cam, cam chain tensioner. There's just a lot less parts because it's a push rod overhead valve engine, which means that the camshaft is actually located down in the, it's actually uh, driven off of a, a gear off of the crankshaft. Uh, it's one cam, it uses a unique uh, rocker arrangement that that single cam, one lobe, operates both intake and exhaust valves. So drastically simplifying it, moving things down into the oil, using short, robust uh, push rods, um, all things that really simplify the engine and allow it to run on maybe uh, in, in dirty, uh, sandy, dusty conditions for many, many uh, years without possibly as much oil as the CB125 would have required in that entire system. That engine was very successful. It still is around the world, um, in, especially in places like Brazil, the Philippines, Pakistan. Um, but in the, about, about the 90s, Honda began to have uh, service networks in these countries that were more sophisticated and they were able to do maintenance uh, more, more easily and metallurgy and, and technology improved to the point where they really weren't interested in this engine anymore and they started developing other other uh, designs and 
those satellite manufacturers that Honda had originally developed this engine for. That's one thing I forgot to mention is that Honda originally developed this engine to be manufactured in satellite uh, facilities. So it's always been under Honda license manufactured in Brazil, China, Pakistan, and around the world. And so those, those, those satellite manufacturers then kind of took up the mantle of manufacturing this engine um, when Honda lost interest. And what they did, especially with, in, in China, is they took the CG125 and they turned it into the CG250. So they bored out the cylinder and uh, you know, increased the display, displacement by that, of course. And then they added a balance shaft. And so um, if you look at the CB125, one thing you'll notice is it doesn't have this whole assembly out the front. This is the balance shaft. So this is a device which most modern engines have, especially if they're single cylinder, um, because they have that, that heavy weight going up and down and it can cause vibrations. And the, the balance shaft uh, uh, counteracts the somewhat the effects of the, of the, the single cylinder going up and down. Um, uh, somewhat like a, 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 a three-cylinder engine or perf a perfectly balanced six-cylinder engine, it counteracts those, those, balance, those uh, forces. Um, so that's what they added. You know, then they ended at 229, and then they, this is, this, they've been making those for over 15 years now, um, this specific design. It's very popular. Uh, there are many different versions of it. Not all of them are high quality. Um, and that's, you know, to be expected. Um, but if, you know, we have, with this engine, is a U.S. representative of the manufacturer. Um, we deal with, directly with him, and we can get spare parts um, very, very quickly. Um, we've been nothing but uh, impressed with their uh, ability to, to res their response time and um, the ability to have that representative here in the States that can help us with quality assurance. Um, so the next thing uh, is the EPA compliance. And um, that has really been just a tremendous success story for us. Uh, we we uh, started in, I think it was 2017. Um, we partnered with SNS Cycle out of Viola, Wisconsin. SNS, if you're familiar with Harley Davidson, that the SNS name is since the, the 1940s has stood for uh, basically performance parts they manufactured for Harley bikes. Um, and it, they specialize in really in exhaust systems at this point. Um, but uh, they started with carburetors. But um, they helped us, they have a, because they make aftermarket parts, they have a uh, emissions lab and they've started doing testing for the EPA. So we were able to, to work with them and over the course of about a year, take this bike through the testing required for EPA certification. And part of that certification is, uh, it's uh, 18,000 miles or kilometers of, is what the EPA establishes as the life expectancy of a, of a 250. So what we did was we, we went through that testing, uh, kind of like you know, forecasting out where, what this engine would look like at the end of its life expectancy, if its life expectancy was only 18,000 kilometers, um, which it's not. Um, and our engine not only you know, made it through that, but it held the emissions specs we were, I think we were under half of all of the legal limit in almost all of the controlled gases that the EPA controls at the end of the engine life. So that tells you that not only is the engine working well and making it, it's, hold, it's, its emissions are, are, are fantastic for the whole life expectancy of the engine. And so that, that actually is one of the, the, the telltale signs of engine health is, is it, is it, uh, is it efficient? And it, and it is, and so really that was, we kind of killed two birds with one stone in that sense that not only did we meet emissions requirements, allowing us to sell bikes in all 49 states and then eventually California, but we also kind of proved out the fact that this engine is, is really high quality. SNS was really impressed with the engine. And, and so, yeah, it was, it was a great, great experience for us. Um, shortly afterwards, we, we were able to test as well for California and we have uh, California Air Resource Board certification. And it's no small feat to have uh, an air-cooled, carbureted engine that meets California Air Resource Board standards. So um, we're very proud of that. Finally, what we've been doing with this engine is some really uh, long-distance uh, endurance testing. Um, I, I, I'm really, a, uh, really been enjoying doing that. We started off last year. Yeah, last year, we entered the George Wyman Memorial Challenge, which is a commemoration of of the first person to ride a motorized vehicle across the country. For more on that, check out the, our blog. Um, but the engine was able to make, I think an averaged, 
650 something miles a day across the country. I made it across the country in uh, six days. I was very tired and beat up, but the, uh, the engine was not. The engine just turned along. We, we kept making the joke that, you know, once you fill it up with gas, that engine doesn't know that it's just gone 300 miles. It's, it's just ready to go. So uh, that was a great, uh, great proof of, of, of the engine. And then we've since then done multiple thousand mile rides in under 24 hours. We've ridden down in Baja, and we have owners who've put thousands of miles. Um, at this point, I think we have owners with over 15,000 miles, and they've made it as far north as Dead Horse, Alaska on the Dalton Highway with their, with their uh, CG 250. And um, so it's, it's a really bulletproof engine. Um, it's, it's probably, I, I would, be, I would willing to, be willing to state that this is probably the simplest <laughs> vehicle engine in production today and, uh, and one of the most reliable. Um, we, we have all parts in-house available for this engine. So if there ever is an issue, uh, we can ship out parts, uh, in most cases, overnight. Um, this is an engine that it probably won't require that since it's, it's very low maintenance. And it's also an engine that will, you can, you know, as, if you're moderately mechanically inclined, you can be involved in that preventative maintenance process, oil changes, valve adjustments. Um, it's just all very, very simple and easy to access. Um, and we have lots and lots of videos on how to do all those things. So we really do encourage our owners to, you know, dig into this motor um, and, and, and it can take a beating. So we're really proud of it. So thank you very much for watching this uh, Parts Talk episode. And as always, stay tuned for more.